Hello and welcome to GSM Online. We are so excited that you are connecting with us right now. Maybe it's because you don't feel ready to be with us in person. That is completely okay. Maybe it's because you, you have something else going on. That is all right as well. What you are going to see in a second is a message from Sunday as we begin to think about what does it mean to own our steps? We say here all the time, helping students take their next steps toward Jesus together, right? You're in high school now. What does it look like for you to own your steps? Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you soon. We are going to spend a little bit of time. It's a very short amount of time, okay? Thinking about uh, this, th this idea, this this thing that is kind of uh, it's kind of the thing that we use to to kind of guide where GSM is going as we are following Jesus, and and it's this this sentence: helping students take their next steps toward Christ together. Okay, each and every one of us has next steps to take. Think about this. Think about something that, that you, uh, like, you really, really want. Something in the past that you, you just really wanted. You wanted it to happen. You wanted to uh, have a certain role in a, in a production. You wanted to be in a certain chair in orchestra. You wanted to have a certain position on a certain team. You wanted to get a certain grade in a class, think about something that you really, really wanted. You wanted a, you wanted real friends. You wanted uh, to just make it through winter without experiencing the feeling of not wanting to get out of bed, right? You wanted to make it through winter with, with without experiencing that, something that you've, you've wanted so badly before. Now, if you think of, of some of those things, there are clear things that you can do to maybe make sure that that happens, right? Now, in some of those things, ultimately, someone else might make the final decision. But if we think for a second, if you want to get a decent grade on a test, and you spend, you intentionally spend time studying for that test, my guess, I'm not a scientist, my guess is that you would do a little bit better than what you would have done on the test if you didn't look at anything beforehand. Or say that uh, you play basketball, and after every practice, not to be, uh, you know, uh, 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 I don't even know what to say about it. Not, not to be like the student that is trying too hard, so they stay after to take extra free throws because they want the coach to notice, but because you really want to get better. And so you put in a little extra work intentionally. And then during practice with the rest of the team, you make sure that you are as focused as you can be. There's intentional things that you can do to, to maybe like make sure that the thing that you really want happens, that you have the best shot at it, right? Now, we have people in this room that are maybe from all over the place and maybe stepping into this room in very different areas of your faith journey. Maybe for some of you, this is your first time in a church. Maybe uh, for some of you, you have grown up in the church and and you're starting to maybe think, what does this really look like for me as I am entering into high school or I am leaving high school, graduating in the spring? So we've got people from all over wherever their faith journey is at right now in this room. 
And at the same time, each of you have your own steps to take. I have my own steps to take, not just anywhere, but toward Jesus. We're going to look at uh, some encouragement uh, from a man named Paul. Paul was an incredible, incredible person that lived about 2,000 years ago. He was, he was insanely intelligent. He was very, very smart. And uh, he, he, his whole life flipped upside down. He went from a life of, of loving God, but, but not loving the people that followed Jesus because Paul was raised with a Jewish heritage. And so he went from, from loving God and, and not liking people that followed Jesus at all to having an encounter with the resurrected Jesus and then giving his entire life to following Jesus' teachings and still loving God. And he wrote, he wrote like crazy. He wrote letters and letters and letters to communities all over the Mediterranean Sea that were communities of people trying to follow Jesus, trying to follow what Jesus taught and, and what Jesus instructed, Right? Some of these letters were letters of encouragement. Some of these letters were letters of maybe like correction for a community saying, hey, where you guys are headed, it's, it's not really towards Jesus, but if I can encourage you, maybe just fix your feet, take steps this way. So sometimes there are letters of correction as well. We're gonna read a, a, a section here really quick and it's some encouragement for us. He says this uh, in 1 Corinthians, a, a letter to um, communities trying to follow Jesus in the city of Corinth, okay? 1 Corinthians, he, he writes this. It's, it's chapter 9, verses 24 to 25, and it'll be up on the screen. He says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Paul says, Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we, he's writing to other people that are trying to follow Jesus, right? He says, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. This encouragement from Paul of, he, he's using the understanding that I think most of us would, would have as well when we think of runners and a race. Think about this. The Olympics are going on. Uh, Usain Bolt is about to run the 100 meter dash sprint. And I come jogging out. I'm on the starting block next to Usain Bolt. You think I'm going to do anything in that race at all? Do you think I'm going to even challenge Usain Bolt? Thank you. Thank you for that faith. But I'm going to tell you, no, I will not. Because I have not been training for a 100 meter dash. But Usain Bolt has. Right? So I think we have this understanding of that Paul says, we know that runners in a race, they run. That's what they have to do. Nobody can run for them. They have to run. And he says, if, if, if you're serious about the competition, if you're serious about the race, they go into strict training to a point of having self-discipline to, to know, you know, if you're thinking about running, you're like, man, I just don't, I don't want to do more sprints right now. I just don't. I just want to go and have a turkey sandwich sometimes. That's me, personally. Fill in whatever food item you like. But to have the self-discipline and say, turkey sandwich can wait. I need to do more wind sprints. Go into strict training to be successful within that race. And no one can do that training for the runner. They have to do it themselves. They have to. It would be 
that'd be really great if Ryan could go run and I get faster. But that's not how it works. I have to do the training myself. So no matter where you are at within your faith journey, whether you're, you're really unsure about a lot of this, or whether you feel like you're pretty secure in what you believe, I want you to know that we are here to help you take your next steps toward Jesus, whatever they may be. To help you take your steps. But here's the thing, like a runner running the race, no one else can take those steps for you. You all are in high school. High school is kind of this, this time where you start to experience and feel some more individuality within your lives. For some of you, faith might be a thing that you start to feel like maybe it's becoming your own. Or for the first time, you begin to start asking great questions. Right? No one can take your steps for you. So then what does that mean? What does that look like then? We're here to help, but ultimately, it's up to you to own your steps. We're gonna have opportunities and spaces and places within GSM this entire school year for you to ask questions, for, for you to maybe take a step in praying in a way that you've never done before. There's gonna be opportunity to, to learn from scripture, maybe in a way that you've never done before. And then apply it to your life in maybe a way that you've never done before, right? But ultimately, you have to own your steps.